Hello everyone, my name is Conrad and, well, I suppose I'm the developer and person behind Isomer, and I've not made a Let's Play or any videos like that really, but I thought for this upcoming build, which will be, let me see, 0851, uh, there are a few yeah, there are a few interesting changes, so I wanted to just do a quick video, do a bit of gameplay and explain the differences. So, to that end, just generating a world here, I'm not sure what's going to come up. There are lots of things that are different actually. To start off with, when we get into the world you'll immediately see that we've got a new dropship. There we go. So, let's just pause. Yeah, so it's much bigger than the old one, it's got a different structure. Rather than having two doors at the side. We now have one main opening compartment. One day I really must get round to putting doors into this game, but I've sort of sidestepped the issue by making this chamber sealed and inaccessible to the rest of the ship apart from via this lift. So that's my little that's my little way of saying, okay, well the guys could survive on this. They wouldn't be exposed to the vacuum of space. Anyway, so this is the upper level. You can see we've got a few more glass bits around. A look around the world. Unfortunately, we've landed at night, which will make it more complicated, but it's not a big deal. Let's move a couple of guys out. There we go. Get them to watch the lifts. And the eagle eyed among you will have already noticed that we've got a few more things down here the 75% business. One of the changes in this build is that now you need to store your resources somewhere. So you can't just keep mining and mining and mining and it all goes into some arbitrary place that never runs out of space. That's the top level. But if I show you the bottom level again, you may have noticed these things. They're called vats. Well actually they're called silos. In the code they're called vats, but I changed my mind halfway through and decided to call them silos. And these are buildings and they're built on top of portable power cores and they confer, uh, let me think, I think it's a hundred? A hundred resources storage for each type, so that's biomass, that's dirt, sand, I think that's stone, we've got some ice, minerals, and rare minerals. And you can see we've got 150, no I'm sorry, I think it's a, I think it's 150 storage that the vats give you. Can't believe I've forgotten already. I was playing around with the values, I started off with 100 and I tried 200 and I tried 150 and I wasn't quite sure. I think I set it on 150. The reason, therefore, that this is 75%, so you may have guessed, that's the storage capacity of each vat. Now the dropship gives you 50 storage of each type for free. The idea behind that is, let's say, some nasty humans come along and smash everything up. Well, you kind of need to be able to build new storage facilities if you weren't able to mine the resources and store the resources to build the portable power core and then build the vat. Well, uh, I'm sorry, the silo, and that's a bit silly. So, the dropship always gives you 50 storage for free of everything and then for every 150 you want to store of each resource you need to build one of these. And another nice thing about this dropship is you've got a couple of spawn pads down here to protect the power core. Okay, let's grab a couple of guys. I've also disabled the music temporarily for the sake of this video. So I can do that, because I've got access to the code. Aha! Right, so let's put a light. so we can see what's going on. Let's move a couple of guys over. I was hoping to land during the day, but never mind. I suppose that's the point of a let's play, just see what happens. Let's move the guys out here. And because I want to show you about the vats, let's... Oh, ignore that. Let's just mine a block here and a block there and we'll stick some portable power cores in there. Portable power cores are actually... I've made them cheaper as of this build because you need them for more things. And I think there were something like 65 minerals and then 50 rare minerals before. I just think it was a bit much. So, okay, we built a couple of... We mind a couple of blocks. You'll see lots of new things on this menu, but let's just build the power cores first. Come on, dude. Right. Let's build another one here. And let's see. Because we're collecting we're mining sand blocks out here, you'll see that in the bottom right hand corner the sand resource is going up and 
starting to flash because we're running out of storage space. So let us build a sand silo here. Oh, silly, let's build it over here where you are. Plonk. And then you can see we've got more capacity. So we should have now 250 storage. You can see we've only used 44% of the capacity of the sand type silo. And you may have seen that the actual level dropped within the image as well. So it just shows, it gives you a visual representation of how much you've got. And I built another one, so we now should have what? Um, if they're 150, 350, is that right? Questioning myself. Uh, storage. And you can see it went down. We've mined some more, it's gone back up. And that's how that works. So it's another thing to build and it's another thing to think about. And because it's a building, you have to be careful where you put it because not only will the humans try to break in to get at your power core, they will also break in to try to smash up any building like this. Um, oh, hello. What's going on? Anyway, as I was saying, they'll try to come in and smash up anything from healing totems to mutation pads to long-range transporters, the whole lot. So when you build things, just be a bit careful to put them somewhere that's either protected by your base or by troops, especially if you build them slightly further out. And now, the other thing I want to show you is, let's just pop it there for argument's sake. It's not a good position because it's too easy to access. In fact, no, let's, let's, let's put it up here. Those of you that have been watching the Twitter feed the last few days will have noticed that I've been talking a lot about... I don't stand there. Thank you. I've been talking a lot about the map view that I've put into the game. And in order to access that, you need to build a building. And that's what I'm going to do right now. Again, buildings require power, so therefore they require a portable power core. So let's build one of those chappies. As you can see, it's 35 and 25, so it's been dramatically reduced in cost since the last build. So there we go, let's move you out of the way, let's move you out of the way, and let's build a sensor platform. Plunk. And now we have a mini-map. And as you can see, it scrolls with the game, and one of the things I really like about this is you can quite clearly see where there are resources in the ground. So these purple blocks represent um, these guys, which are blocks containing minerals, so, and even here, there should be some rare mineral blocks according to the map. So it just makes it easier to pick up on where you need to mine. What's going on? What the heck is that? Yeah, just discovered a bug. That is interesting. New in this build are a number of... Because I created a new um, dropship, I also created several new buildings that you can encounter in the wild. And I thought it would be a cool idea if I just smashed up the dropship a bit and created a whole enemy facility around it. I'm never going to find where it was. Oh, another thing is, you can hit tab in the minimap mode, and it gives you a larger map view, which is kind of useful. So let's use that to try and find... where that guy just was because that would have been a drop oh, here we go that would have been a dropship that had been smashed up and oh, no, that's another guy so this would have been a dropship that's been smashed up taken over by the humans and consumed if you like they've put their own blocks in there they've stolen some of the um, technology some of the resources and they've started investigating it it's just one of many things i think there are about 26 different buildings that you can find in the game now scattered around the world and this is one of them and I know exactly why this bug happened, because when I was editing this building, I forgot to remove all the player spawn points. You see there's one just right there. And when you start the game, the game automatically gives you a worker on every spawn point. Now it should be that the spawn points are only in your starting dropship, but yeah, I I I mucked up. Never mind, I'll fix that before the build goes live. And it looks like we've got cheeky so and so coming in through the back wall there. So yes, map mode shows you your guys, enemy guys, not sure if you can see my mouse cursor, I think you can see my mouse cursor in this recording, shows you your guys, shows you enemy guys, shows you projectiles that are flying around, all sorts of things, and unfortunately our guys just died, so 
better move someone over pretty sharpish to deal with that. And there we go. Good night. So yes, that's what I wanted to show you. We've got new drop ships in the new build. We've got new buildings. Oh, I've actually lost one of my vats. I believe that was the sand one, so I'm glad I built these two extra ones. So yes, we've got new things to build. The sensor platform, we've got the vats, we've got the minimap, we've got a new drop ship, we've got new buildings, we've got tweaked buildings as well. Yeah, lots of things. And that's what will be coming out, what's today, Thursday? Probably tomorrow, after I've done a bit more testing. And will be available for anyone who has access to the alpha. Thanks a lot for watching, guys.